Welcome to the EdMaps office hours. We're a little early starting it up. Always nice to get people in the room, get them settled. Um, if you got popcorn, you know, Tristan's going to put on a good show for us today, talking about invasive species campaigns. Um, and we've actually got a pretty good registration list of folks that said they were going to show up for this one. So we're pretty excited about having a crowd like this right before Thanksgiving. Um, who doesn't like Turkey Day? We'll wait just a couple more minutes to let everyone else file in, get a seat, and um, hear about all the different resources that are available. I hope some of you are actually enjoying the cold weather. Um, down here in South Georgia, where we're at, we're 64 miles from the Florida border. They actually had a freeze warning last week. So a little bit of a, a wake up call for all the Southerners um, and something for the northern, uh, Northerners that have moved down here to realize they've lost their cold tolerance. It is not a pretty thing. Had to get out the puffy jacket and it was, you know. About a minute more and we'll go ahead and get started. I will say that if you have topics that you've been, you know, I really wish they'd talk about, uh, you know, how I can make custom data sets. Great. Let us know topics that you care about. Um, we're always looking for more topics to put into these office hours. Um, we're pretty good about guessing some things you might care about, but it's always nice when it comes from the audience. Um, looks like one of our attendees walk to work in one degree weather this morning. You have just horrified some of the people here. Um, yeah, I think it snowed in my 16 years down here in South in Tifton, it snowed once. That comes from after I was living in Cleveland for most of my life. It's a bit different. Yeah, we had a we had a friend that gathered up all the snow from his yard to make a like two foot tall snowman. Yeah, very short lived snowman. He had a very short, but, but full life in the South. Um, it's my pleasure to, to start this one off because um, we're also, you're seeing a new face here. You're seeing Tristan. Um, we hired Tristan a little while back. He's still getting used to us and our antics. Um, so he's gonna be the one today talking about invasive species campaign. Um, we are past our 11 o'clock start time. So Tristan, go ahead, introduce yourself and kick it off. Terrific. Um, so my name is Tristan Hansford. Um, I've been working with the center here for almost three years, though Chuck really seems to think it's only been a couple months. Um, but my job title is the invasive species and ecology specialist. Um, but my colloquial job title is really just the wildlife guy because uh, that is what my background is so um and that really wouldn't have looked good on a uh, on a business card uh, kind of thing but so without further ado we'll go ahead and get started if i can figure out how to share my screen right cool so i'm going to kind of use my um uh, my cursor here as a bit of a pointer for you. Um, I hope everybody can see that all right. But to get started, I'm going to give you a little bit of a brief overview of some of the resources that Bugwood has available for uh, helping to create an invasive species campaign. Um, to start with, we've got our image database system, and this one right here is invasive.org. Um, but to get a little bit more familiar with the database system, we're going to go to Bugwood Image Database System. And if you look down here at the bottom, there are five different sites that you can choose from. Invasive.org is what we were just on. Um, and all five of these sites really pull from the same image database system. 
Now you can see that they all look a little bit different. So here is uh, forestry images. We'll go back to the Bugwood image database system and we will click on insect images. You see they look very similar. Uh, and really the only difference is between these things, the image, or the insect images is um, framed to allow you to search for uh, insects and other invertebrates more easily kind of thing um, in these categories here. But if we go back to the forestry images, all of these categories are more related to forestry and natural resources. Now they all pull from the same image database system. So if I were to search for Norway maple here, if I can spell that right, in the forestry database, you see these are the images that it pulls up for us. Now, if I go back to the insect images and search for the same thing here, it gives us the very same images. So the only real difference between these sites, um, functionally anyway, is these categories that will assist in you looking for things under the uh, respective site kind of thing. So most of those sites look very similar. Um, the forestry, the IPM, the insect, and the weed images all look very similar. Really, the only difference is those categories. But if we go to invasive.org, you can see it looks quite a bit different. And the reason for this is because it's got a number of different resources available here, um, like Invasive Species 101 is just some in, a general invasive species information as well as some resources that you can use to, to get even more information. Um, we've got publications available, some how-to stuff, and I really encourage you guys to, to kind of explore this site um, at your leisure because there's a lot of information to sort of unpack there. So breaking away from the image database system a little bit, we also have EdMaps available. And this is our reporting platform. Um, as well as our mapping platform. Now it's got a lot of different things that, that can be used for, for, for honestly a number of purposes. And we'll sort of break down uh, how that can be used for an invasive species campaign here in a minute. I'm sure we have talked about EdMaps through these office hours many, many times before. Um, and then next we've got the Bugwood Presents. Now it works a lot like the image database system, except this one just has presentations. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Yeah, and then here is our resource database, which is a lot like the present and image database, except this one has a number of different um, publications and um, fact sheets and things like that that are available for you to use. So to get started with how to use these programs to build an invasive species campaign, um, how I would start if you didn't know what species you wanted to create the campaign about, um, through invasive.org, you can actually click on species here. And say you wanted to create a campaign for species that may be of concern in Georgia. So you can scroll all the way down here to the bottom and actually click on Georgia and get access to a couple of different lists and other resources. And to start with, um, here is a pretty comprehensive list of invasive species of concern in Georgia. So it's pretty, it's gonna be pretty easy to find something to run an, a campaign over. Um, if you access these lists, but for our purposes, let's just say we want to make an invasive species campaign about the Asian longhorned beetle. So if I click on that there, it brings me to sort of a description of the beetle as well as some relevant information. Um, and you can use this information to sort of begin building your outreach and identification uh, materials kind of thing. And then down here, there are a number of other resources that you can use, and a couple of these we'll actually get to a little later um, in some of our other databases. That, and some of these will have more update, updated information as to 
you know, new populations and things like that. And if we go all the way over to the right up here, we can click on view images, and this will show you every single image that we have that is relative to Asian longhorn beetles in our image database. And all of these images are for free to use for personal or educational use. Um, and we will talk about how to use those in just a second. But that was basically a, a long way of getting to this point to seeing all of these images that we have available for a species. Now, say you've come into this and you already know the species that you want to create a campaign about, and you don't need to go through a bunch of lists to find it. You can just search for it in the search bar here. And it'll bring you up closer to the same thing. And if the common name that you use to search for or the scientific name that you use to search for exactly matches one of our subjects, you can click on go to the subject page and it brings you right here to the same place we just were. But if not, it will give you a list of relevant searches. Like for example, this one here is just of the genus rather than the, um, the species. But you can use uh, this search bar to get really close to a lot of things. Like for example, if I took out Asian and I just wanted to search for longhorn beetle, I get a number of different species um, that have longhorn beetle in the common name or close to it kind of thing. So that search bar is a really useful, useful tool for us there. But to go back and talk about exactly how to use those images, there are a number of different ways. Um, so you can request these images through Lightbox. Now, depending on the image, you can actually request different sizes. Um, for our purposes, we'll request the PowerPoint size. And so now that image has been added to our light box. And if we go up here in the top right hand corner of the screen, you can click on light box. We can see that image there. Um, and then we can go ahead and request permission to use and download. Now, before you do that, if you have a number of different images that you want to use, you can go through and add all of those images to your light box and just do this part one time. Now, if you select personal use or educational, um, you're going to be approved for these things automatically. But if, you've, if you're wanting to use these images for commercial purposes, and that is that if there is going to be any exchange of money or if this is going to be on a product that you're selling or anything like that, you have to request for permission to use it commercially. And that takes quite a bit longer. And there are a number of different ways that you can um, actually receive the image um, once you've actually requested it. Now, I'm, I'm not going to go through this process because I don't actually want to use that image. <laughs> but that gives you a bit of an overview of how to use Invasive.org to find images that you can use in outreach materials, as well as um, identification and trainings and such. So we're going to move on just a little bit to EdMaps. Now, through EdMaps, once you've begun the campaign um, and you've been advertising, you've been holding events, you've been holding trainings and things like that, you can actually create a project um, to have some of those volunteers or attendees use to, to report into, and that'll help you gauge the success of uh, your campaign. Uh, but there are a couple of other different tools that we have um, that you can use also in creating some of those campaign materials. So if you go to uh, distribution maps here, again, if I can spell, you can find that species and then actually look at report maps for those species. Now this map's not quite up to date, um, but if you pick a species that we do have up to date, 
you'll be able to use this map and actually export it to use in um, some of those outreach materials. Now to kind of give an example of a species that is up to date, um, Here we go. So this is what a map would look like that is up to date for, for a species. Um, the reason that map's not up to date is because South Carolina previously used another reporting platform and they are the closest one to Georgia here um, that actually had Asian longhorn beetle. Um, but that is soon to change as they're about to upload all of that data for us to at maps kind of thing. But once you're here, and you've got the map pulled up, you can download it here at the top right hand corner of the screen. And that download will start in the background. And you can use that in PowerPoints and other outreach materials as you go. So that is a really quick and easy way to use the distribution maps for EBMAPs. Oh, before I get too far away from that. There's actually a couple different uh, ways you can display that map. You can display it by um, points here that will actually show the difference between uh, positive and negative reports as well as treated um, when it comes to plants and things like that. So this is another great avenue that we have available through, through EdMaps. And then you can also look at a list of those reports as well. So that you can look for some of those reports individually. And then from there, you can click on species info, which will give you more um, of an overview of that species, similar to what we found on invasive.org, um, as well as other resources that you can use in some of those outreach materials. So getting over to Bugwood Presents, we're gonna go back to Asian long-horned beetle really quick and see what we've got available for, for those. And here we have a number of different presentations that have been put together and uploaded um, that are available for you to use in some of those trainings and outreach events. Um, this kind of saves the work from, from a lot of the campaign organizers um, to get more of the boots on the ground kind of thing, rather than spending a whole lot of time back behind the, behind the screen, redoing some of the things that have already been done. Um, so if you don't like some of the presentations here, I mean, you're more than welcome to use some of the images from, from our database that we talked about earlier. Um, but we do have quite a few different presentations available for a number of different species. And these are all readily available for, for you to use. So coming over to the resource database. This one is a lot more fun to me personally. Yeah, I just cannot spell today. If you look for the species here in the search bar, you can find um, a number of different publications that have been created about those species. And I personally use this one all the time um, when it comes to um, my training events, because this saves me from having to create um, different fact sheets. Oh, that's one that didn't work. And uh, identification infographics, infographics all over again. So we talked a little bit earlier about some of the things that we would um, see again. So if we go back to invasive.org, some of the resources that we had available 
down here at the bottom are the same resources that you can find through the resource uh, resource database. And all of these things are available for use as well. You can most of them you can print right from work or at home to hand out to these events. Now some of them are not formatted to be printed out from a regular printer like here. Yeah, like this one. This one was intended to be a pamphlet. So you can see it's not going to quite print right. Um, but most of them are are formatted for regular old paper printing kind of thing. Um, and they can be readily used for some of those outreach materials. Um, so I finished pretty quick, I think. Um, I am sure I missed a number of things. Um, Rebecca, Joe, Chuck, do you guys have anything that you'd like to add that I undoubtedly missed here in my uh, my very, very quick synopsis of all this? This is where we love breaking in new folks. It's so much fun. <laughs> um, so one thing I will highlight um, is that the resources Tristan showed you are trying to put all the things you would need for your awareness campaign at your fingertips. Um, it's actually the entire reason this group was founded was you had two extension specialists that were kind of bemoaning the fact this is, you know, 1994 before we have internet, before we have a whole lot of other stuff. Wouldn't it be nice if you had the resources you need right at your fingertips? I know I can use it. I know exactly how I have to cite it. It's ready to go. Rather than I'm going to surf around for a while and then I've got to redo and make a presentation. And it, if I was a county agent, I'm thinking, well, I got to do a talk on Asian longhorn beetle. Couldn't someone just put a slide deck out there I can use? Well, yes. Yes, we can. So that's where a lot of this comes from. They're also not closed resources. Um, as he was going through there, you saw images by Karen Snovercliff. She's up at Cornell. Um, she's one of the, the leaders of the diagnostic effort up there. Um, you saw stuff from Forest Service. You saw some stuff from us. This is a system that is reliant on people willing to share. So if you happen to have a bang up presentation on a particular past, you know, you know what, I wanna help. Here, let me upload it. I know I've cleared that all the images and stuff can be used. Please use my PowerPoints. Um, it's what the National Plant Diagnostic Network has been doing for a number of years, providing fairly generic PowerPoints that you can drop your logos on it, add your branding, and just slip these slides in so if someone's a new person trying to put together a slide deck, they don't have to start from scratch. And as things get updated, there are new things that get released. Um, that's actually one of the things we love when we built the, the presentation database. When you go online, that's always the most current version of it. If someone said, here's my PowerPoint, but you know, I had some, some distribution slides in there, it's changed. They upload a new presentation, we reprocess it, and you always have the current one right there. So it, it works out really well. Um, we've been trying to tie more of this into the projects you have within EdMaps, that the whole image system has this whole notion of image recruiting. I know I have a project, I'm gonna want certain images. So let me select my content. EdMaps projects are kind of an extension of that. Here's the species I care about. Here's some information about my group. And then here are resources that we're promoting that are relative to either my clientele because not every client group is the same, relevant to my area because, you know, Washington State is definitely different from South Georgia. And you need to have materials that are customized for them. So we will also take questions in the chat, but go ahead. 
real quick um, how you can upload some of your presentations is first you need to log in and then it's as simple as putting in a name and dropping in the file and hitting upload um, and then some of those presentations become available for for others to use as well and th there is a little step in the middle where Tristan or Rebecca or I or Chuck go through and do some data entry on it we tag it with what the particular subjects are um the nature of the presentation what you're trying to do with it just so it's a little easier to find um one thing i i don't know if you showed click on bugwood presents and go to the listing of presentations the browse presentations we got to redesign this page the filters this is all the metadata we're applying to anything that's provided to us so if I'm looking for things that are only affecting a commodity of cotton, I could go in there and look. It's helping just to give people some context of, of what those presentations are about. Exactly. So we can do the same thing using our image database system. Um, that I neglected to talk about. Once you've selected a subject or you are on a subject page, you can use those very same filters and say, I only wanted to find pictures of some of the larva. Boom. Those are all just the pictures of the larva. So you can use those tools to help narrow down some of these things and make, make your search for specific aspects of these species incredibly easy. The resource database also has a list of fields that come out on the filters. Um, reoccurring theme with us. Um, we do have a project underway that's going to redesign this page. Funny things we find out with analytics. No one ever sees that filter tab. It, it's the hidden secret of the databases that the filters are over there. So the next redesign is just going to put it straight on the page. Um, and make it a whole lot easier for you to realize there are options to help you narrow down to what you're looking for. Um, so far, the question Q&A, the question section is empty. Um, so either we shot done that good. <laughs> that, that's what I like to think. It's a, like a, the thought going through my head when I see people outside is, they woke up in the morning, looked in the mirror, and went, mm, I look good today. So, no questions. You must have done a bang up job. People, people thought it was great. Exactly, exactly. Um, so Rebecca is sending me messages and reminding me to go over things. Um, so she wanted me to show you guys where the projects are. And let's see if I, yeah, projects right down. And so this is where you can create a project, uh, explore different projects, and kind of um, see a lot of different things. <laughs> if, if you, we did do an office hours on projects, it was a lot of fun. Um, Tools and Training has all of our old webinars under the trainings. So if you're curious to see some of that, feel free to go in and take a look. Um, so if someone is asking the question, I ha they haven't looked, but is there a good presentation on invasive weed seeds? Well, let us see. I know there's presentations on things that spread by seed, because a lot of these are, are organized in there by species, not so much by the pathway that they're expecting the species to move by. Um, so in those cases, you kind of need to know um, what you were looking at. Um, I will say, and it's going to take me a second to pull up, um, there was a project by USDA APHIS, Plant Protection Quarantine Identification Technology Program. You thought the name of our program was long they've got a speed. And as part of what they did, 
um, were a project on invasive seeds. And those images, there it is. Um, so, and I'll show for, for everyone else involved, Tristan, if you would go to, to IPM images, He showed invasive.org, he showed forestry. IPM is the integrated pest management, which yes, does apply to invasives. Go to nodes in the top under browse. And nodes are um, under, sorry, left column. What you talking about? Close that menu. <laughs> left column. Oh, yeah, under browse. There are two browsers. Gotcha. Yep. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, click on ITP. So, the identification technology program is a pretty cool resource. They um, get lists of different species and they have been building tools to help people know what the different species in that are all about. Um, there's a drop down there for the projects they've done. And if you'll click in that, Tristan, um, and scroll through there, there's, there's quite a few projects they've actually put in there. The one I just dropped in the chat is the same link for go to CID, Seed ID, S E I D, mobile app, and view that project. So this was showing for the species they were looking at in that mobile app, here are a lot of seeds that in this, in this particular case, they were being caught in um, cargo. And this was for the port identifiers to be able to better identify some of the things that were coming in. Um, they're pretty remarkable photos because they don't just go and say, well, I'm gonna go find a sample somewhere and take a picture. In a lot of these cases, they're going back to the type specimens. Um, for those non-geeks in the room, that's the original specimens that were used to characterize a species. They reach out to the museum and say, hey, could you send us some of that? And then they take these excellent photos very close up. Um, they're doing photo stacking, so everything's in focus. And they're beautiful for being able to identify a lot of what's there. So excellent, excellent program. Um, I will highlight something that's another program they do. Um, IDTools.org. This is where they list resources specific to identification. This is outside of what we at Bug would do. They're a partner with us on many things. But this is where they've actually got their Lucid keys, matrix-based keys, um, that help you look at characteristics of something and identify it. Um, they're really a, a cool program that we've worked with for a number of years. So good times and fun resources to work with there. Other questions or comments in the chat? Uh, here's one. Who would I contact about uploading the information presented for my state on invasive.org? You're looking at the folks. Um, which state are we talking about? Oklahoma. Okay, great. Um, I would say either I, go ahead and contact me. Sure. Um, let me put my email into the chat. We'll get that assigned out to, depending on the materials you're looking at for Oklahoma. Um, if it's your invasive species list, if it's presentations, if it's, it'll go to someone here to follow up with you and get that done. Um, depending on who's doing data entry that day, Tristan's been doing a lot of data entry. That's where he's really gotten familiar with the systems. Um, Rebecca is our data coordinator, not just for EdMaps, but for all data. 
So if you thought her presentation last time talking about data standards was was a lot, that's not her only job. So Tifton, Georgia, you need a hobby. Um, looking through for other questions or comments from the chat. Tristan, go to the species info page for something like hydrilla. Ooh, that's going to be under. Can I get to it from here? Yes. Yep. Okay. So hydrilla or ticolata. I just wanted you to scroll like all the way down on one of these because there are those excellent oh, yeah. additional maps and invasive species listing sources that um, you didn't get a chance to earlier because you were trying to get through all the material. Um, so, so yeah, so these these materials will help you out with um, identifying, okay, you know, maybe hydrilla isn't in my state yet, but it's a really big problem. So we should be on the lookout for it, things like that. And the other thing I would mention is with EdMap specifically, um, if you go to EdMaps, and yeah, you can, you can click there. Um, but in the, uh, in the tools section of EdMaps, we have um, the, the, these whole bunches of tools where you can request data, so you can kind of see what's going on in your county or your state um, and get quant you know, quantifications of things, see who's kind of doing reporting. Um, you can look at the uh, report verifier lookup to see who's reviewing records in your state. You can um, you know, use the information we have in EdMaps to help you decide um, maybe who to work with, maybe who, I'm sorry, maybe the, um, the species that you need to be aware of or focused on and things like that. So um, in addition to the tools page, uh, Tristan briefly uh, kind of hovered over the training option. So if you go to the training page, Tristan, um, there's all kinds of training materials, including uh, videos and uh, presentations done by partners we work with so you can see how other people are using um, EdMaps. And so you can see how to use the EdMaps app, how to use the EdMaps website and, and um, our past office hours, including things like project, which uh, Joe and um, Tristan briefly touched on. Um, so someone asked, oh, and, and Joe's typing an answer, but. Uh, can we get a list of the resources, sites, speakers have mentioned today? So uh, Joe's been putting in the chat links as as he's talked about, or as Tristan has talked about these different um, these different websites um, and resources that we've gone over today. And we'll go ahead and pull those and put them into an email to you all. We know we know who you are. You registered. Works out great. Um, I will say a resource that we didn't talk about when you're doing an invasive species campaign is actually us, the people. Um, right now, I'm helping a group there. There, it's not necessarily so much an invasive species as a pest that every year you have moving up from the southern southern U.S., Mexico, and going through the country. Um, affects corn, affects cotton, it affects vegetable crops. It happens every year. We're used to it. We know we know how to manage that guy. But it's nice to have an early warning system to know when it's coming through so you can direct your management. Right now, some of the conversations we're having are people calling me up and saying, hey, I'm looking to, to do some stuff with Heliacobarpazia with corn earworm or tomato hornworm or whatever species. Can you tell me if anyone else cares about this right now? We talk with a lot of folks and we're happy to make the connections and say, yeah, there's here's the people in 
Illinois, Wisconsin, Indiana, and New Hampshire that are working on this. And, and what I know they did in the last year, give them a, give them a call. They're nice folks. Um, most people, aside from being tremendously overworked and not enough time to get done what they're trying to do, genuinely care about what's going on. It's just getting getting them connected to know that that there are other people interested. So we're happy to help provide that. You don't have to be using our products at all. Um, we just like to help pull people together. So I dropped the email addresses for myself, for Rebecca and Chuck into the chat. Reach out, drop us an email, say, hey, do you know of somebody working on this? Because we'd love to do something on, on this particular topic, but I think we're the only one. Chances are you're not. It's just sometimes that connection hasn't been made. And someone in the chat said that their mind is blown with the materials. This is what you do when you start in 2001 with one website. And then a, <laughs> multiple decades later, this is what it grows into. Um, we are a group that does outreach. And if we tried doing all of these by creating everything from scratch every single time, it, it wouldn't be possible. Um, it's only through the, the dedication and partnership with other folks that half of what we do is, is even plausible to consider. Um, and it's, it's even going out beyond this that hopefully, maybe middle of next year, we'll be able to do an office hours on a WordPress and Drupal plugin we're developing that puts all of this right at your fingertips in your content management system. So you just pick that I wanna see these galleries of pictures or I pick that I wanna see these resources and it puts it directly up there without having to necessarily go to all the different places we've shown you. Um, it's just pulling it together. This is, this is where we try to get everything going. I will say, um, Tristan, you go back to that Bugwood Images website. You, you went back to a couple different times um, because Joe talked about, you know, everything we have is, is, is kind of, you know, by contributions from a lot of different groups of people and different individuals. And so if you have amazing photos, good photos of things, they don't have to be the photos Joe was showing you with the ID, the ID pick stuff. Those are, that's probably some very, very, very expensive camera equipment they were using. But, um, we are always looking for more, more photos of, especially invasive species. Um, we have, there are some subjects we do have a few hundred photos for, but we have plenty of subjects we don't have any photos for. And the photos in the Bugwood image system are the photos that feed into the species info pages. They feed into the field guides for the EdMaps app and so forth. So these images, are, are incredibly uh, important in not just, you know, being available to other people to use, but also to making the, um, the field guides and the species info pages, um, you know, more robust. So if you do have images of, you know, different invasive species or pest species or biocontrol agents that you work on, um, we are happy to, to uh, do the data entry to get them into the database to be used uh, so that they're being useful to other educators outreach and to people who are using these various systems. Um, and the, the upload process is, is very simple. Um, you'll submit your photos um, with the information we need to do data entry on them. We'll do the data entry we send that back to you so that you can make sure we did the data entry right and you'll make them available to the public. Um, and like uh, Tristan was showing, they show up on our websites, they show up in, um, in the species info pages and in field guides, things like that. So we are always looking for um, good photos of, of these different 
invasive pest biocontrol. And, you know, even if you don't work specifically in those areas, we have plenty of images like Tristan was showing on, you know, just entomology, just forestry, just, uh, you know, um, plant, animal, and whatnot diseases. So, be, you know, feel free to um, submit your images so that they can be um, broadly used. I mean, we have 316, almost 317,000 images. Honestly, in a lot of cases, that's, that's not enough because we don't have some images people are still looking for. Well, and I'll, I'll steal the screen share from Tristan and um, give the additional sweetener on there, which is some of you get asked by the people employing you to please show your impact at the end of the year. I work at UGA. I got to fill out like three of those reports a year. It's good times. Tristan showed you the whole process for requesting permission to use a picture. Well, that just doesn't go in the ether. We store that forever because we not only need to document the fact that permission was granted. So it's kind of, you know, protecting yourself in case so there was ever a question about whether you requested permission, but we return stats on that. Um, this is for my particular account. I haven't submitted pictures in a few years, but um, I still had in the past year, 22 images that were requested for use in 20 requests. Six of those were commercial, 11 were educational, no money was involved. Three were personal. Somebody wanted to make a t-shirt with one of my pictures on it. Bless them for that. Um, but we give details. When you write into that form what you're using the pictures for, this is what they get. So I know the state of Idaho was using my images in the products they're doing. So I can put that into my dossier at the end of the year and say, hey, I, I put these out here. I've only got a, a couple thousand pictures out there and available but here's where they're being used. And I have records of that that I can go back to over time. We are doing the same things in the other systems, trying to make sure that if someone's making a request to use something, I can tell you exactly who it was that was requesting use and you can claim that as impact. We do this for full organizations. We do this for, I love running the report for the identification technology program. Because for them, we see all these other countries using the pictures in their guides for poor identifiers, in their invasive species guides. And that's the purpose of their program is to provide those resources. So in terms of fulfilling their mission and direct impact, this is a nice way to show that. Um, and it is always interesting to see what pictures of mine people decided they wanted to use. Um, and you can click through those and see what they are. So it's not just putting it out there and, well, I'm sure something good happened. We tell you exactly what happened the entire way. That also goes into how many times people viewed the pictures, why this is currently my most viewed picture. No clue, but it is. Um, and we even know how many times pictures have been downloaded. So I took that picture, it's been a while, but folks are still wanting to use that because it's silver leaf white fly on the back of cotton. So it's not just going into the, into the ether, it's we're recording how it's being used so that you can show impact to your work. Yeah, and to, and to get to those stats, show them how you got to them. To get to those stats from images.bugwood.org, statistics. We're hoping to revise that um, sometime down the road because now you have your EdMaps dashboard where those stats are, and you've got your image database where those stats are, and you've got your presentation. We're trying to consolidate all that to far more of a here has been your contribution to the community. And that's in progress. It'll be fun to release that, but it's going to take a little bit. And the other way you can get to the statistics page is if you go to any of the image systems, 
and you click on your little user icon in the top, you have to be logged in, Joe. <laughs> Uh, you click on your little user icon in the top right, um, and you'll um, it'll take you to a, a page with a few links about interacting with your images, as well as um, to uh, see view image requests and viewing statistics at the bottom there. So that'll take you to that page for um, for looking at, you know, are you wanting to see details? Are you wanting to see summaries? Things like that. So you, also, go ahead. It's also where if you've made requests previously, here's all the requests I've ever made. And here's one I made for example purposes. Uh, the book was not called the greatest images ever taken. Um, but showing that when a request was made for commercial requests, some you instantly know if you can use or not. Others, you can tell it's been forwarded, and at least some you can tell if they're rejected just based on the, the rights that the, the photographer had. So if you do contribute images, and we hope you do, um, you can set up in your profile how you want to handle things like commercial requests. So in, the, in, you know, in this case, that person who submitted the bare tooth Russell a photo, they didn't want um, any commercial requests to be approved. Uh, where it says forwarded, that person wants to make the individual decision for their photo. Um, any personal or educational requests are automatically approved. So when you request images for your fact sheets, for your, you know, your signage, for your outreach materials that you're you know, not selling, um, it'll automatically be approved. I think we've given them more shock and awe. There's, it's a lot to take in. It's why we're sometimes told that, you know, some of our presentations are like drinking from a fire hose. Um, kind of amusing and a good time for those watching, but for those experiencing it, uh, it's quite something. And, and if you didn't see something, if you didn't see a resource, if you didn't see a tool that you hope exists out there, you know, that's, we can't fit everything in a half an hour or an hour, or in some cases, even four hours. I've given a four hour presentation before. Um, again, a fire hose to the face. Um, you know, we may have that tool or we may know someone who has that tool or that resource. And so we can help direct some of that information. Um, and if you mention a tool you hope exists and it didn't, Maybe it's a good idea and we can work together to make that tool. Okay. I'm still not seeing any questions come in the chat. I'm pretty good at vamping while people type, but I think we've reached the end of my ability to vamp, which is saying something. So, Thank you all for attending another office hours. We are working on a topic for our next one. Um, someone was batting around the idea of how to track engagement with your invasive species campaigns. But I think that that particular person needs to do a little work on getting that presentation together. Um, if there's other topics that you are interested in, you can always drop them in the chat, drop us an email. Um, we know what we know. We don't necessarily know what you don't know. <laughs> so um, if there's areas you wish we'd go into more, we're happy to do it. Um, even if it's not necessarily directly related to our tool, I think we're probably still happy to go into the, some of those topics and, and talk about it. Uh, I think maybe one time we might do funding sources for invasive species campaigns. So there's a few out there that aren't too terrible to get into. Um, so let us know what you think and, and we'll follow up. That said, I think I'll 
Th thank you for joining us today and, and be on the lookout for, we're not gonna have a office hours in December. Um, we, because we do these like the third Friday of the month, we were thinking, yeah, that's a little too close to, to holidays and we probably wouldn't have a whole lot of attendance. So we will pick this back up in January. Um, and we'll send out the um, the emails about the topic that's selected as well as the um, you know the description of it. And then this is being recorded. It will be made available on the EdMaps training page, as with our previous um, EdMaps slash Bugwood office hours. So it, it they are available there. So you can look at our previous presentations on on. Um, EdMaps data and uh, uh, data quality assurance and control kind of stuff and projects and setting yourself up in, in EdMaps Pro and all that stuff. So we have several um, presentations and videos already available through there. So, you know, be sure to, uh, to check those out. And again, let us know if you have any, any questions, any ideas for future um, office hours. Take care. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Eat some good turkey, maybe some ham, and uh, we'll see you after that. And I know the end button is somewhere. There it is. See you all later. <laughs>